Hilton from the Center for Artistic Activism in New York considers Jesus a radical Mediterranean Jewish peasant who demonstrated his political views through acts of civil disobedience. He used miracles that were an accepted type of performance at the time, and he used them to illustrate the imbalance of power and inequality. And he created a vision for a better future by sitting down with people who were regarded as sinners, such as women, tax collectors, and the disabled. Similarly, Moses used the power of stories that were heavy with moral implication, such as the Ten Commandments, that are still powerful for some people today, and are wrapped around facts, context, and meaning. In the same way, Muhammad used the power of epic poetry in the Quran to tell stories. Poetry was also the popular cultural communication tool of the time. So we fast forward to the 20th century and the British suffrage movement, which included many female artists who had been discriminated against within the art world. They were angry and they wanted that to change. And they wanted the political and domestic worlds to change along with it. They produced paintings, protest banners, postcards, posters, jewelry, and tea sets. And they protested against the male dominated art world in places such as St. Stephen's Hall in the British House of Parliament that was dominated by male statues and paintings of men. Sylvia Pankhurst threw a lump of concrete at one such painting. Her paintings of working class women laboring in factories caused political upheaval by illustrating the grim reality of women in the workforce at the time. And it could be argued that the suffrage movement did much to influence second wave feminists 70 years later. The feminist movement achieved attention and success for women's rights, gender equality, and much of it through art activism. In the civil rights movement, protests included Rosa Parks refusing to give up her seat on a segregated bus in 1955. While she's often portrayed as a working woman who just happened to stand up to the system, or rather sit down, she had in fact been a member of the NAACP for many years and the boycott was well planned. This famous photo was in fact taken a year later on the day that the segregation of buses came to an end in Montgomery. And the white man who we can see sitting behind her was actually a journalist who just happened to be with the photographer on that day. We could view this incident as performance art blended with activism. The dark side of art activism can be seen in Nazi party propaganda in World War II. Adolf Hitler recognized the power of emotion and storytelling in activism. And he wrote, the art of propaganda consists precisely in being able to awaken the imagination of the public through an appeal to their feelings. He openly discussed the nature of truth in propaganda in a way that foreshadowed the insidious nature of fake news nearly 100 years later. He said, propaganda must not investigate the truth objectively. It must present only that aspect of the truth which is favorable to its own side. Hitler used every type of communication tool available at the time to create propaganda that successfully insinuated its way into German households. Internationally, famous art activism projects around sustainability have included the digital photography of Chris Jordan, Christo and Jean-Claude's plastic wrapped islands, and this gigantic dead whale made of plastic waste created by Greenpeace. And of course, the ironic street artworks of Banksy. This particular Banksy artwork is a collaboration with the Extinction Rebellion. The same climate change concerns are at play in New Zealand as in the rest of the world. Rising sea levels is one of them. <coughs> in 36.5, a durational performance with the sea, New York artist Sarah Cameron Sunday walks onto the sand and remains standing there for 12 to 15 hours as the tide comes in and engulfs her body and then recedes. She has done this in six continents over seven years, drawing attention to the climate crisis and rising sea levels in particular. In 2020, she was to include Manukau Harbour, New Zealand in her series. 
However, the COVID-19 pandemic cancelled her performance. In a sense, one crisis engulfed another. Cameron Sunday saw a parallel with the struggle for artists to survive on a daily basis in New York and the struggle for humanity to survive in the face of sea level rise. Her aim is to communicate with a global audience. Viewers have been impacted by her work with one person quoted as saying, she is trying to raise awareness and that's something we can't engineer. An engineer can't build awareness. That's something that comes out of a community. The 2018 IPCC report detailed the impact of earth warming on nature and humans with catastrophic results anticipated. They have received, re released an update on this report just a few weeks ago, and it's even bleaker. The 2018 report was read aloud at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival by more than 100 artists, politicians, scientists, and members of the public over 50 hours. In 2020, Ryan Reynolds and Davy Simpson organized a reading in Christchurch. Their objectives were to bear witness to the most important climate-related document ever produced, to create a sense of ownership over the report, to learn together as readers and listeners, to stand up and be counted in a demonstration, to mainstream the facts, and to encourage dialogue on the issues. So the sustainability issue of wasted resources is of global concern and has been of particular significance in Christchurch over the last decade. Whole house reuse was conceptualized by Rekindle, who wanted to deconstruct a damaged home and transform the entire materials into beautiful and purposeful artifacts. Over 250 people, many of them artists, created more than 400 objects and artworks from 480 different materials that made up the suburban house. Resulting objects range from fine jewellery and taonga to junk puppets made by school children and an entire micro house. The exhibition at Canterbury Museum was attended by over 120,000 people and showcased the original art and craft as well as workshops, talks and an auction. Rekindle saw the project as a way to connect people with shared values and bring them together around something that matters to us all. They published a journal about repurposing waste materials and it's been used by several district councils around the country. Whole house reuse was at its most effective when it presented an alternative to the status quo. It was about creating a different kind of reality, showing that reuse at a large scale is possible and creating a sense of what resourcefulness can look like. Studies show that sustainability themed art activism can be effective as long as it, the artists create compelling works that call attention to the problem as well as offering hope for a solution. Artworks that achieve this show beautiful depictions of solutions and leave viewers feeling happy, hopeful and with a sense of awe and feeling more inspired and enthusiastic about climate action. So I will finish by saying that to raise the profile of sustainability issues through art activism is important, but to present an inspiring alternative reality of optimism and positivity that is practical, accessible and solution-based and to trigger genuine and lasting change must be the ultimate goal. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was so fascinating. I hadn't heard anything about the whole house reuse so um it was a fantastic exhibition and a really cool project yeah, yeah. very cool i was i was working at canterbury museum at the time so i was part of that project oh wow yeah that's really that's really really interesting and i think it's really it interesting was... um the need for the art to be kind of solution focused because I think sometimes people get a bit sort of doomsday about all this stuff so that's really interesting yeah that's I was I was very that. interested I was very interested in researching that actually yeah as well as the history of it but yeah and I'd, I'd like to do more research on that actually because I think it's really positive for artists and activists coming together to know that they can make a change and what the best way of doing that is and um, it's actually kind of inspiring and sort of heartwarming to know that it's positive imagery and positive stories and solutions that do it.